How you doing? This is Black Shy Guy here once again with a brand new podcast episode and we are starting a brand new season. And as always, I thank you for sitting at my table. And listen, we got a couple of situations going on here. A couple of situations that I want to bring attention to. And I know it's been going on for a while, but I got to address it. I got to address it because we got ridiculous people taking up the time of law enforcement and taking them away from actual crimes that are happening. Actual crimes that are happening. That's what's going on. I really do think that people that lie, people that lie like the way Josie Smollett lied should be put into prison. No joke. They should be put in jail for at least the minimum two years. Minimum two years so people can stop doing bullshit like this. You know why people do it? Because they can get away with it. There's no reason whatsoever that you're going to waste the income tax payers. The income tax payers money and use it for lies that you know. That you know are not true, but still, in front of the media, you push the agenda of it being true. And who I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Carly Russell. <laughs> Listen, she is the second Smollett. The second Smollett. I am telling you, you cannot make this shit up whatsoever. You cannot make it up. And the story is just hypening up. And you know what? I This is what I'm going to say. The story that she's come up with gets more and more ridiculous the more it expands. Like, if she would have kept the story short, it would have made more sense even though it sounds ridiculous anyway. Because when you call 911, they stay on the phone with you. There's no way you call 911 And you hang up to call a family member and tell them about the situation you're dealing with. There's no way that can happen in a 911 call. There's no way. There's no way someone can call 911 and tell them, listen, I I found a missing kid. I'm with the kid right now. Please get law enforcement over here. But I'm going to hang up and call a family member and let them know what's going on. They're going to tell you, no, you're not. You're staying on the phone with us. We're going to get law enforcement there. They'll be there in about 10 minutes. Is the kid okay? Is the kid bleeding? Is there anyone around you? Does it seem like the kid is in danger? There's no way they're going to allow you to hang up so you can call a family member. That's impossible. They should have known she was lying right there. But obviously, obviously, I'll... uh, uh, us income taxpayers are going to have to waste money to push the investigation further to find out whether she's lying or not. Because obviously they're going to have to take her word for it. So now she has all the county, all the people in the city worried because everybody's thinking, oh my God, there's an, ad- there's an abductor out there kidnapping people and using a kid to nab obviously i'm gonna say girls girls um um, ladies females whatever the case may be obviously the abductor is using a kid to kidnap females obviously he's not gonna do it to a guy and it's just the whole story was weird from the get-go let me explain to you the whole situation further okay Let me explain the whole situation further so those who are not following the story can get a sense of what's going on and can follow much more um, better just like those who have been following it. All right. The story is about Carly Russell, a missing black woman in a social media frenzy explained, okay? This is what made the story go viral okay from the beginning the details of Carly Russell's uh, disappearance seemed dis- distant to cause an internet frenzy Russell a black 25 year old nursing student went missing from the side of a highway in Hoover Alabama on the night of July 13th 
Shortly after calling 911 to report a child wandering along on the side of the highway, that's already suspicious already, a child. And let's notate the fact that she said the child looked like they were three to four years old. There is no way she happened to hit the lottery and be the only one to witness a child in the age of three to four years old wandering the highway by themselves. She's the only one that's seen this child. That is impossible. People are so damn nosy in this modern age that it would have been five cars pulled over to help that child. There's no way. Let's continue. Russell's brother's girlfriend, right, on the phone with her following her 911 call, reported hearing Carly scream and what sounded like the phone being dropped. When the police reached Carly's car just a few minutes after her 911 call, they found her phone and wig nearby. Can you believe it? Her wig fell out. She really wanted to make this story seem like a criminal minds case. <laughs> she really wanted to make this story seem like a criminal minds case, which is utterly ridiculous. Let me leave my wig and everything else behind so they can really fall for the prank that I'm about to pull on the whole city. Let's continue. Along with her purse and the food she just picked up for dinner inside of her car, neither Russell nor Itado was anywhere to be found. None of them, okay? Russell's disappearance went viral on TikTok and other social media platforms. And in the days following, received national media attention as law enforcement agencies searched for her. Listen. This is definitely going to go viral because you know how the liberals are. They're going to say, wait a minute, a black woman has disappeared and nobody's paying attention to this. So you know they're going to have to push the agenda. You know they're going to have to push that agenda that no one pays to peop to black people when they go missing. And in a way, it is true. It is true. In a way, but I'm not going to get into that topic. It's too long to explain, and there's so many details that need to be added so everybody can understand it. So let's continue with the story at hand. The chilling details surrounding her disappearance and the prospect that a child was used to lure her into danger likely contributed to its going viral. Fears about human trafficking and abduction have become a bigger part of the national conversation in recent years because, as of you know, as you know, The Sound of Freedom is out. That is a fantastic movie. Please go support that movie. That movie explains a lot. And it also reveals a lot in what goes on, on ho in Hollywood. That's, that's why they're trying to shut that movie down. The Sound of Freedom is out. And this is why ab abduction and trafficking is being talked about as of late. Go see The Sound of Freedom. Go support it. Because it also supports the fact that the crime of trafficking and abducting of young children needs to stop. Go support that movie. I really highly recommend that you do. Let's continue. Then 49 hours after she went missing, Russia showed up at the doorstep of her family home. Listen. Do you know what is that when your child goes missing and all of a sudden they show up at the front door? That is like God delivering a present. An unexpected present to the parents. You know how high their heart must have soared when they seen their daughter at the front door. Not realizing that she has done it to herself and that a long-awaited nightmare awaits in the near future when, they, it, when it's revealed that this whole scene, this whole played-out kidnapping was a prank. Not a prank. But a scenario that she wanted to make look real because of mental situations she's going on. You know what I mean? But we're going to get to that. Let's continue. In a news conference on July 19th, Hoover Police Chief Nick Dursey's revealed that detective had been unable to verify many of the things, many of the things that Russell had told investigators. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the brief interview she gave them following her return, according to Dursey's, Russell said that after calling 911, a man emerged from the trees near the highway to say he was checking on the child. All of a sudden, a man 
emerged from the trees. I don't know if he was Aquaman or, or Tarzan, who, whoever this individual was, he emerged from the trees. Remember, this is in the middle of a highway. All of a sudden, he emerged from the trees. Let's continue. She then said the man forced her into a car. All of a sudden, he emerged from the trees, right? But he was able to get her to a car. It, it, this whole story is going left. This whole story is going left right there. So you know when the police was hearing the story, they was look, glassing at each other and, like, thinking to themselves, like, this sounds like such bullshit, but let her continue, right? Because usually when people lie, they just bury themselves further. She then said the man forced her into a car, and the next thing she remembered is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler, said Dursies. Russell said that the man who kidnapped her had orange hair with a bald spot. I don't know. Maybe he was Krillin' from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Whatever the case may be. I don't know who this person was, but the man had orange hair with a bald spot in the middle. Obviously, orange or red hair, those people do not exist. So if you see a man with orange or red hair... He's going to be highly noticeable because you don't see those much. And that she heard the voice of a woman who was with him but never saw her face. Maybe that was Android 18. Who knows? I don't know. It's, it's like it's getting this story is getting utterly ridiculous already. I mean, if I was the cops, I would have been able to hold a hold a laugh. I, I would not have been able to suppress a smile like it would have been too difficult. But let's continue. At one point, she said she managed to escape from the trailer, but was recaptured and taken to a house where she was forced to undress and be photographed. So she escaped. For some odd reason, the man captured her once again. I guess her attempt were, um, I don't know, um, a fa an utter failure, right? But it, it gets more interesting. <laughs> I'm, seriously, it does get more interesting. After being put in another vehicle, Russell says she escaped again. So these kidnappers are the most, are, are the most stupidest kidnappers alive. The fact that she was able to escape twice, which is highly unlikely in the kidnap situation. There's no way. It only happens in movies. There's no way that you're going to have a high probable chance of escaping twice. That is highly unlikely and very improbable in a real life scenario. There is no way you're going to escape twice in a situation like that. If you escape once, I give you that. But if you escape once, that kidnapper is going to make sure it don't happen again. Uh, he's going to make sure. So let's continue this fiasco that uh, 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 of the kidnap that happened in Alabama. Now. Let's. I'm kind of lost right here. After being put in another vehicle, Russell says she escaped again and was able to make it to her home by running through the woods. So wherever she was, she was able to make it home from wherever she was. How many miles it was it? Who knows? But the fact that no one else seen her make her way home from wherever she was, unless the kidnappers was right across the street from the house, maybe... That was the case, but knowing her story, maybe that was the case. There she shared some other details that seemed to cast doubt on Russell's story. Video footage showed Russell leaving the spa she worked she worked at the day of her disappearance, reportedly concealing a bathrobe, toilet paper, and other items. Those items, as well as the snacks she, per she purchased from Target shortly before her disappearance, were missing despite her purse and other belongings being left with the vehicle. Can you believe this? So listen, she went kind of food shopping, snack shopping, and she also purchased um, items as toilet paper and etc. So the kidnapper, when he kidnapped her, she said, listen, hold up. I know you're kidnapping me, but I need toilet paper. And I need my snacks. I need my Kit Kat or whatever I got. I need those. You mind if I get them? Yeah, sure. I know you, I know. while you're being kidnapped and wherever we're going to take you, I know you're going to need toilet paper. I know you're going to want to use the bathroom. So, all right, go grab that because I don't want to supply you with that. So, the kidnapper was a very nice kidnapper. All right? He was very nice. Dursey also noted that Russell drove 600 yards while on the phone with 911 saying she was watching the child and police said they received no other reports of a toddler walking alone. So the toddler was the flash. So was she? 
while she was talking with the 911 caller she drove 600 yards so either she was next to the child and the child was walking like the flash and she was side by side with the child who was the flash or she seen the child from 599 yards away oh i don't know 500 i don't know i don't know the distance of the child doesn't correlate to where she started with the phone call it just doesn't make any sense at all all right so Video footage on the highway appears to show only one figure, Russell, on the side of, of the road. To think that a toddler barefoot that could be three or four years old could travel six football fields without getting in the roadway without crying is very hard for me to understand, Dursey said. So already, already this story is just, it's gone left. It, 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 is, it is utterly, utterly in, in the trash can at this point. Then there were the internet searches on Russell's mobile phone. It gets even more bizarre. I mean, seriously. In the days before her arrest, Dursey said Russell was searching for information about one-way bus tickets and how to take money from a cash register without getting caught. She also looked into whether someone had to pay for an Amber Alert, a government program that helps alert communities when children are missing. On the day she went missing, Russell apparently searched for the movie Taken, a 2008 thriller in which Liam Neeson plays a dad who hunts down human traffickers who kidnapped his teenage daughter and her best friend. This is when, if I was the cop, I would have been like, I, I really just want to stop this investigation. Backhand the damn freaking idiot. Put her in jail and call it a day. But they have to continue because that's what law enforcement has to do. They got to play their cards. You know what I mean? They got to have to go through the procedure no matter what. I do think it's highly un unusual on the day someone gets kidnapped that they're searching the internet, Googling the movie taken about an abduction. I find that very strange, Dursey said. It, 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 this is, listen, this is weird. He didn't come right out and say, but the subtext seemed clear. Police have doubts about Russell's story. And just as quickly as social media users rushed to share concern for Russell and the details about her dis disappearance, so too did they rush to offer their opinions on the latest developments. Some criticized Russell for perpetrating what, to be, what appeared to be a hoax and argued that her story would make it harder for people to believe families when other black women go missing, which is actually true. Now, when... Other families actually report a missing kid or missing relatives. That can cause doubt, even though no matter what, law enforcement has to go through the procedure of a missing person, no matter if they have their doubts. So despite that, they have to go through procedure because they'll get their ass handed to them if they don't go through the procedure and the pe person is obviously missing. But this story does cause concern for people who actually go missing because someone like this this idiot who developed this hoax about her being kidnapped is gonna cause a shroud over everyone who comes into the police station and reports someone missing others condemn the rush to judgment noting that russell could have mental health issues that the public isn't aware of and pointing out that missing black women rarely receive the same amount of media attention white women do what does it fucking matter about the black black ladies who are kidnapped not getting attention not getting as much attention as a white woman going missing who gives a fuck about this young lady's mental health at this point i really don't I really don't. I don't care about her mental health at this point. When the investigators are going out there miss, go, looking for a woman who's actually not missing. When at that point in time, there's a person who could have gone missing or, or probably have gone missing. But all the wasted effort went into an individual who was not missing, which took away a lot of time from someone who is actually abducted 
do you people not understand the gravity of that situation? I don't give a fuck about her mental freaking health at that point in time. I don't. I don't. And I don't give a damn about the subject matter of a one of a black woman going missing and not getting as much attention as a white woman going missing because this situation that she has caused is going to cause a shroud over whatever color the individual is when they report someone missing then the cop is not going to look at the color of the person when they go hey you know this person is missing so and so they're not going to go, is the person black or white? Black. All right, hold up. You know, we're just going to relax or whatever. If they do that, they're going to do that to whoever comes in. Because when this story, this story impacts whoever reports someone missing. Whoever reports someone missing. Yes, when you got two idiots like Jesse Smollett and Carly, who are both colored, unfortunately, yes, a lot of law enforcement may look at a colored individual and say, mm, is this another small act? You know what I mean? This is why, unfortunately, the two latest stories that has caused a high buzz were caused by two colored individuals reporting hoax that obviously did not happen. Did not happen whatsoever. I mean... I don't have anything more to say about this story whatsoever. I hope people like this get put in jail. I don't care about their mental situation. Mental health is being used to excuse a lot of crimes. And I'm just done with it at this point. This modern age when it comes to mental health is just getting utterly ridiculous. The excuses that are coming out of it because of mental health is being used by a lot of actual criminals who are making it an escape option. That's all that is happening with that situation. That's all that's happening with that situation. And then we got another breaking news situation. For some odd reason, people are deeming Jason Aldean as being racist. His new song that has people going crazy, going crazy. I mean, utter, uh, utter insanity. People are calling Jason Aldean racist because of what he said in this song. I mean, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm going to play to you a small snippet of what's going on and why people are upset. Let's hear some of the lyrics. Maybe it is racist. I don't know. So far. I just heard the first two lines already, and he's talking about criminals jacking an old lady. Wait a minute, I'm not gonna lie, I'm digging this song. Hold on, let me rewind that. I, I kinda I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I kinda I'm digging that that first I'm not gonna lie, this song is kinda nice. I mean, I'm not even uh I don't even follow country like that, but this song is kinda nice. Hold up. He's describing everything that has been happening. And if anybody want to um, 
criticize his video. A lot of these individuals that are causing these crimes are white. So I don't still get. I don't get why people are calling this video and this song racist. I don't get it. So, but but let's continue. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie because in the small towns people don't play. Listen, look, I'm gonna tell you something, okay? And I have a lot of family in New York City and I I I pray for their safety every day because I live in a small town. And the majority of people here we're armed. I'm armed I, I I'm gonna be honest, I'm armed, but we're licensed to carry. We're licensed to carry here. And does crime happen here? Absolutely. But a lot of crime does not happen here because the criminals know the criminals know that there's a possibility that the person you're robbing is going to be armed. That's why crime is not ludicrous like New York City. New York City, crimes happen at a high rate for the simple fact that the criminals know you're not armed or the high possibility of you not being armed is high because even good guys carry unlawfully at times. So, I mean, I'm not going to deny that fact. But the possibility of someone being unarmed that they're robbing is highly probable. That's why they choose to rob at a high rate in New York City and places like New York City. So when he says a small town, a lot of the small towns, and let's 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 be honest, a lot of the small towns, which are red states, a lot of people are allowed to carry. A lot of peop a lot of people carry nonetheless, whether they're allowed or not allowed to, but they they carry. So that's what he's saying. He's saying that you're not gonna do that in a small town because you're not gonna get far. You're not gonna get far. The possibility of success in a small town is um zero to none so i mean i i'm digging this song i mean i'm digging the message so far so i don't get why people think the song is racist <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm digging the I'm not gonna lie, I'm digging the message. Because he's also I like the fact that he said, I got a gun my dad gave me. Because a lot of small towns, that's what happens. The guns are passed down to family to family, generation to generation. And it, it, it's crazy, like my guns is gonna be passed down to my daughter easily. You know what I mean? Anything happens to me, my guns are gonna go to my daughter. Period. You know what I mean? So it, it makes sense what he's saying. I don't get the racist part of people. Why Why is it racist? Because he's saying small town. You know, black people live in small towns as well, right? Especially in Alabama. There's a lot of black people in Alabama. So what is going on that makes this message racist? I, I still can't find it so far. And we're halfway through the song already. Let's continue. Recommend you don't. I like that in the video. It showed somebody trying to rob a store, and the guy stopped them, and they ran out. Yo, I'm I'm digging. All you see is criminals in this video, and him explaining that you guys would not succeed in a small town. What are people? Are people on the side of criminals? The people are saying that this video is racist. Are you on the side of criminals? Because he's he's for the good guys here.
Well, I don't know how many of you actually seen the video. I'm seeing the video for the first time. The things that's taking place in this video is horrific. I mean, what we went through in this modern age when it came to the protests and all of that stuff, it, it was crazy. And, I, and, and some of the people who are mad about this song is talking about, he's talking about the BLM riots. He's not talking about only the BLM riots. He's talking about riots in general. How a lot of people um, disrespected law enforcement. Uh, and, and obviously it's the people who are the first ones to call law enforcement when there's um, things popping off their way. But a lot of people disrespecting law enforcement, a lot of people vandalizing, a lot of people um, stealing from stores, etc. A lot of things happened in these riots that were uncalled for. It, 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 there's a lot of people who took opportunities during those riots to commit crime and burglary. And this is what he's saying. Try that in a small town. And it's facts. I'm with him. Forget that. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yo, I like this song. And I love the... Uh, I li this is really American right here. I think those were um, Marines in that shadowy um, gloom when he showed two individuals walking. It seemed like one of them had a rifle. And the fact that it showed them in that gloom and then it showed the guy raising up the flag. This is a beautiful video. I don't see... The racism in this video whatsoever. I, I'm digging this video. I'm really digging this video. I enjoy it very. I'm glad I, I talked about this ish, this topic because it made me need to watch the video. And now that I see the video, it's it's a beautiful video. It, it's it's very American. You know what I mean. are dropping their own crops for the day a friend is in need and, and the farmers yo i'm telling you oh i can't believe people are watching this video and saying it's racist i can't believe it now that i'm watching this video i cannot believe people are saying this is a racist video and they've come to help it's what this community and a lot of our community stand for somebody needs some help you'll get it Because America stands for the, the farmers, the crops, our um, our law enforcement, the army. I mean, I, I remember back in the days when all of that mattered. You know what I mean? Like when it was it was to be a true American. Big up to Jason Aldean. I mean, I don't know what he said encounter to what everything that's been going on i'm gonna start following all of this um wow that was a powerful video it's actually a powerful video and the message he was spreading throughout that video was not racist at all it was just being a true american big ups to jason aldean big up i mean highly respect let me know what you think this is black shy guy and as always i thank you for sitting at my table this was the first episode of season six thank you many blessings enjoy your weekend i'm out of here peace a large criminal who must be put away another innocent victim